As Jim Beheim enters his 25th season as Orange head coach, he must replace last season's nucleus of Hart, Blackwell, and Thomas. Senior Alan Griffin replaces Jason Hart at the point. Three-point specialist Preston Shumpert segues into a starting role as well. And high-rising Damone Brown leads the way as the New Look Orangemen open their season against St. Francis of New York next. Super Sports presents Syracuse University men's basketball. Tonight from the Carrier Dome, the season opener. The St. Francis Terriers in town to take on the Syracuse Orangemen as the 2000-2001 college basketball season gets underway. Great to have you with us in the Carrier Dome on the SU Hill this evening, along with Jim Sadlin. I'm Ted DeLuca. Jim, I know no opening night jitters for you, but for the Orangemen, last season's great trio of Jason Hart, Ryan Blackwell, Etan Thomas is gone. St. Francis comes in, a team that went 18 and 12 last season. Four starters are back from last season's Terriers team. This should be a very tough test for the Orange Men to get this new season underway. Not, not very likely that Jim Beham would open with a team this strong this early. Like to get tested a little bit easier. This is a good basketball team tonight, Ted, and I think we'll see uh, a team that will come in with no fear whatsoever, try and press, run up and down the court, shoot lots of threes. Should be a very exciting game, actually. In terms of the matchup, it has the feel of a first round NCAA tournament game for the Orange Orangemen, maybe getting a team like St. Francis of New York in the first round. They're led by terrific guard Stephen Howard and Jim, a guy that at one point thought about coming to play for the Orangemen. And, you know, played up in Watertown and, and uh, has some great sideburns, too, if you check it. Those are the best that I've seen in a long while. But you know what? He's a scorer. Averaged 17 points a game last year. Shoots the ball from the outside. Very physical guard. So Syracuse's guards will have their hands full tonight guarding Steve Howard. For the Orangemen, before last season's campaign began for Syracuse, Jim Beheim said that Damone Brown had the most talent of any player on his team. He kind of underachieved last season. This, his senior campaign, has got to be a big year for him. Well, you know what it is, Ted, too? I think it's his team now. Jim Beham has always featured the seniors on his team. Last year, as you mentioned, with Blackwell and Thomas and Hart, they were the key two guys. Thomas is really the guy. I, I mean, Brown is really the guy right now that's going to have to lead this team. But he's got some help. You know, Shumpert and Griffin and Williams and those guys, they're all going to help this team, too. Alan Griffin, the new starter at the point for the Orange Men, has got to have a solid at night because St. Francis of New York loves to press. They put a lot of pressure on you. And they will, and Syracuse has not seen that kind of pressure in either one of their exhibition games, and you can't duplicate that in practice. So this is kind of trial by fire right here for Syracuse in their opening game. We are ready to go. It should be a great matchup as Syracuse and St. Francis of New York get the 2000-2001 season underway. Starting lineups, opening tip-off right after this. Tip-off time, rapidly approaching in the Carrier Dome, the season opener for the Syracuse Orange Men. The St. Francis Terriers in town to get the season underway. The St. Francis starting five in the backcourt. Howard and Nunn, Reyes in the middle, Kowalchuk and Smiley up front for the Terriers out of the Northeast Conference for the Orange Men. Griffin and Williams, the new starters in the backcourt. Billy Selick in the middle, Preston Shumpert and Damone Brown up front. Head coach for St. Francis of New York, now in his 10th season, Ron Ganulin. Former assistant coach at UNLV, 136 and 164 with St. Francis of New York. And the head coach for the Orange Men in his 25th campaign, Jim Beheim. 575 wins, 199 defeats, and two trips to the national championship game in 1987 and 1996. The officials will call the action on the court in the Dome this evening. Gene Manji, Steve Wellmer, and Keith Herring, an outstanding crew, Jim. So we'll have an evenly called ball game without question. The Orange Men and St. Francis of New York stepping onto the court here in the Dome for the first ever meeting between these two schools. A lot of pressure on that young man tonight, Jim. Alan Griffin getting the start at the point for the departed Jason Hart, and he'll have to contend with a lot of pressure from St. Francis in this ball game. Well, Smiley and Nunn, both small guards, so they're gonna certainly try to compensate for that by getting up and playing 94 feet of basketball. Billy Selick in the middle for the Orange men. First ever seven-footer at Syracuse University, jumping against Haberth Reyes, 6'11". 
And a tap comes to the Orange Men. The 2000-2001 season underway for the Orange Men. Fans on their feet in the Carrier Dome. Jumper dumping inside for Seelick. Gets behind his man and scores off glass. Orange men on the board. Well, usually they don't look to Billy Seelick, but it seems like Jim Beham and his group decided tonight we're going to go to him early and see what he can do. Syracuse opening in a man-to-man -man defense. And the Orange men with some intense man-to-man -man pressure force a turnover as Greg Nunn throws it away. Well, right off the bat, we saw Syracuse play good half-court denial defense. St. Francis is going to go up and try to play man-to-man -man full court. As you mentioned, puts a lot of pressure on Ellen Griffin. Griffin wearing the number one this season. Syracuse's leader on the floor now in his senior season, getting a chance to start for the first time at the point. Williams pulls up. 18-footer is true. Well, Syracuse, we know, has good perimeter players that can shoot the ball from the outside. And there's going to be games they're going to miss some jump shots. But overall, there's a very strong perimeter group here with Williams and Shumpert and Brown and Duaney when he comes in. What kept Williams out of the starting lineup in Syracuse's two preseason games wasn't his offense, it was his defense. Jim Beheim wanted to see improvement from him on the defensive end. Good pass to the middle and scoring for St. Francis inside Stephen Howard. Yep, no surprise there that Howard is going to be their offensive gun. You know, the problem with Howard right now is that he's going to have to guard Preston Shumpert on the other end. That's going to be a very difficult task for him to be able to score 20 and guard Shumpert as well. Somewhat of a mismatch. Shumpert a couple inches taller. Shot rattles out for Griffin. And the board is cleared by Reyes. First game of the year, no matter how many exhibitions you've had or anything else, Ted, this is still some jitters right here. And uh, you're going to watch both teams, I think, take some quick shots and try to make some things happen a little bit sooner than they normally would. Lee ball from the corner for St. Francis. Paul, Paul Kowalczyk. Kowalczyk with a bucket. Sophomore out of Poland. St. Francis has a, a number of players from overseas on their roster. Miscue by the Orangemen in the front court. Howard breaks loose and he drops it in to give St. Francis a 7-4 lead. Well, this is exactly what a team like St. Francis needs. They need to hang in the game for the first eight or ten minutes just to give them some confidence that they can play with Syracuse and the Big East. Syracuse, on the other hand, sloppy here the last couple times. Good penetration by Alan Griffin, but he couldn't finish the shot. Those are the ones that he will finish later on, though, as you as you well know, because getting to the basket, that's very easy. St. Francis is not very good defensively the last two trips down. Miscue by the Orangemen in the front court, allowing Howard to score. And that pushed the Terriers lead to three. Howard has it out high, Shumper checking him. He drives, lost the handle, and Billy Selick stepped on the end line. So St. Francis will keep it in the front court. The type of team that St. Francis has that is that they shoot the ball off on the outside. They'll, you know, have a couple big kids in there, but I think they're mostly perimeter players and puts a great deal of pressure on Syracuse's defense because it stretches it so much that you have to count, you really have to guard everybody out on the floor. Syracuse goes to their 2-3 on their out-of-bounds plays right now. You can be sure that St. Francis will look to take the three if they get the opportunity. Smiley controls. Whoa! Oh, okay. Shot clock was running down. That's going to say it was about a 30-footer. None well shy on that attempt. Good defense by the Orange Man. Williams for three. That ties it. That's why Jim Beham has got to teach Williams how to play a little better defense because you can't substitute for what he does on the offensive end. Syracuse trying to score in transition. Lead pass is too long for Preston Schumper. So St. Francis won't take possession as Shumpert called a timeout as he was falling out of bounds. So the Orange men will hold on to it as they burn a timeout. Tied up 7-7. Just underway here in the first half in the Dome. Syracuse getting a test from St. Francis in the season opener. Don't miss the next issue.
Remember watching those after-school specials when you were a kid? Well, they're back, and Time Warner 13's got them. The Emmy Award-winning original after-school specials are on Time Warner 13 every Tuesday at 6 p.m. The important life lessons depicted in those classic shows are just as meaningful today. So make sure your family's watching the original after-school specials, Tuesdays at 6, only on Time Warner 13. Just underway in the Carrier Dome, a lot of offense so far. Leading the way in scoring, Jim Deshaun Williams with five quick points. Well, he is such a good offensive player that, you know, as we mentioned earlier, Jim really has to work with him on the defensive end to make sure that he can come out and play because he's their best offensive player. I truly believe that. He can score outside. He can take it to the basket. He creates better than anybody on the team. Both teams shooting the ball well early in the first half. Williams has it near wing. He certainly is playing into Syracuse's hands with St. Francis playing man-to-man -man, because they just don't have the size or the strength, I don't think, to play Syracuse man-to-man -man the whole game. Shumpert loose on the baseline for his first bucket of the season. Syracuse has looked pretty good defensively so far, Jim, in that aggressive man-to-man. -man. Well, I think that, you know, the enthusiasm and the, and the emotion of the opening game certainly is going to force you into playing real difficult and hard on the defensive end. But uh, you, you can really judge that midway through the second half, I think, when things kind of settle into a pattern. Long three-point field goal try. Well short for Greg Nunn. And the Orange will take over. Official timeout on the floor. Less than five minutes gone by in the first half. Tight so far, 9-7 Cuse. In our ever-expanding world, we need a reliable source. One that addresses important aspects of our daily lives and provides us with useful information. Health and Home Report is that source. With stories on how to get the most for your money. Where to go for a great vacation. Hot fashion tips. What's happening in the world of arts and entertainment and the latest medical breakthroughs. Health and Home Report provides a world of information. Hi, I'm Ted DeLuca. Time Warner 13 is the best place to find exclusive coverage of area sporting events all weekend long. Catch Syracuse University men's and women's soccer, basketball, and lacrosse. You'll see scholastic events including football and basketball, and it's a great place to watch live crunch hockey. Tune into Time Warner 13, Fridays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. and Sundays at 7 p.m. for the best in local sports programming. Season opening contest for the Syracuse Orange men, unranked to start the season against St. Francis of New York out of the Northeast Conference and the turnover battle so far in tonight's game. Syracuse scoring off St. Francis turnover earlier. So the Orange men have got that transition game going. They've also done a very good job on Stephen Howard. He's only had one shot so far in the game, and uh, I know Ronnie Gandelin certainly wants him to get a lot more than that. Howard averaged 17 and a half points a game last season for St. Francis of New York, native of Watertown, north of Syracuse, so a lot of friends and family making the trip down Route 81 for this ball game. Alan Griffin being very aggressive early on, taking the ball to the basket taking a couple jump shots, but he's also getting to the hole. I think he sees the fact that he's got a physical advantage over none. He's really looking to take it in. Griffin's shot is long. Billy Selick tracks down the rebound. Good effort by Selick. Shumper pulls up a long three. He must have been practicing that shit. Well, there's no defense for that. If you're going to stop about seven feet behind the three-point line and shoot him, it's very difficult to put any kind of defense on that. He shot 43% in three-point range last season, improving upon his freshman year. And he'll be expected to do a lot of that for the Orange men this year. Pull up and drill that three bomb. Brown nearly forcing a turnover. I like Syracuse's man-to-man -man defense so far. So far, very aggressive. Pretty good little pick and roll. Nice ball movement by Smiley. Kowalczyk now with five points. Syracuse quickly back the other way. Williams. And he is the leading scorer in the ball game with seven. Now he is a scorer. I mean, he's just not a good shooter. Now he is a good shooter, but he's just not that. He really can get to the basket well. Not afraid to shoot the ball, which is also part of it. Howard from beyond the arc. Wide. 
Off Brown's hands, whistle inside. Good defense by Preston Shumpert on Steve Howard, forcing him to take a tough shot. Howard hadn't got a lot of looks and a lot of touches, and I think he hurried that one a little bit. Checking in for St. Francis, guard Carl Sanders, junior out of Brooklyn. St. Francis team is very experienced. As you mentioned, they start four seniors and uh, coming off of an 18-12 season. One of the, certainly the best backcourt coming back in the league. Ah! And, and a uh, foul inside. Yep, foul inside, and uh, Damone gets his first opportunity for a couple free throws. But um, this is a team that will get a lot better as the season goes along, St. Francis. Should probably say the exact same thing for Syracuse as well. Uh, because Syracuse certainly has some new people in there that are playing different roles, even though some of them played a lot last year. Kowalchuk whistled for the foul. Second team foul against St. Francis. Damone Brown at the stripe. Brown making the transition to the power forward position this season with Ryan Blackwell's graduation from Syracuse. Jason Morgan in for St. Francis, junior from Willingboro, New Jersey. He replaces Kowalczyk, who sits with five points. And I think you'll see St. Francis do a lot of substituting. Syracuse hasn't done anything yet, but uh, certainly we'll get a few people in there shortly. Damone Brown, though, when you look at him physically, um, he's gotten a little bigger, but he hasn't gotten a lot bigger. And, uh, you know, he's still, he's going to be playing in that four spot when they do play man to man and he's forced to play against some real physical players that could work against him but uh, his quickness certainly will work for him once he gets in the offense Howard in traffic and it's taken away by Deshaun Williams outlet pass Alan Griffin ahead of the field missed the shot Selick is there he banks it home almost a pretty good thing because uh, Griffin doesn't get the basket, but it gets the big guy another hoop, which gives him a little bit more confidence. You don't have to worry about Griffin having any confidence, but it helps him a little bit. Three-pointer is well short for Morgan. Orange lead by nine, trying to push the advantage. Griffin penetrating. Selick there again. Griffin on the weak side. Here's Brown. He's fouled. So Brown has shot 67% from the line last season. And hit his first two free throws of the night. We'll go back to the stripe. Yep. And, and as you can see, the game evolving here a little bit as we watch this move on the inside. Seelix right there for the rebound. He can't get it to drop down, but Syracuse is all over the boards right now. Um, as you watch this thing evolve a little bit, Syracuse's skills and talent kind of taken over early even on here with 13 minutes to go. They... they uh, now, whether or not St. Francis is a little nervous or a little tight, they're having a difficult time scoring and getting anything going on the offensive end. Syracuse is doing whatever they want at their end of the court, as noticed by the fact that they've gotten, now if he makes his free throw, 20 points in the first seven minutes of the game. So um, there is a difference in class here, there's no question. You know, Northeast Conference and the Big East, but this is the class of the Northeast Conference, so you would think maybe they play a little bit better here, but they probably will as they go along. Brown, four for four from the line to start tonight's ball game. Jim, to your point, St. Francis doesn't have senior Richie Dominguez in no. the lineup, one of their starters from last season. He has a bad hamstring. So he's being held out of tonight's season opening game in the Dome. Great pressure by the Orange men. They have a foul inside. And that really does hurt them too, Ted, no question. He's a, a young man who averaged 14 points a game last year, physical shoots the three. Um, they, you can't afford to lose those kind of players, but uh, Ronnie Gallon has decided that they need him back later on, and he has an opportunity of really hurting himself if he plays tonight. So he gives double teams on the out of bounds. Here's Alan Griffin. Foul on Selick, by the way. First team foul for the Orange men. Kind of a wild pass thrown by Williams, taken away by Jason Morgan. To the wing, Howard on the line, shot short. None the rebound. Side. Offensive foul as Billy Selick takes the charge. Pretty good play by Billy Selick as he realized that he was going to be late and probably couldn't get a block shot on that and uh, got right on the bottom on the baseline. Squared himself up and drew the charge. Nice play. First personal on Morgan. Yep. Good play by Selick. Yep. Selick's played well here early on. Four points, getting some offense going. Hard to believe that Billy's a senior now. Time flies. He's been around here for a while, but 
Isn't he just a junior, though, ac um, athletically? Outlet pass. And driving to the hole, Morgan stuffed from behind by Alan Griffin. Here comes Griffin back the other way. Brown, a little bit too strong there, sealing. Brown to the hole. Offensive foul against Damone Brown. Interesting sequence here. And, in, in, uh, you know, when I look at Brown, looks like he. They were way too deep to draw that charge. It seemed like it was way under the basket. And maybe the basket should have counted and then the foul from there. But um, we get to a timeout here. Syracuse certainly dominating anything that's happening on the inside here tonight. Orangemen have a big lead to get the season underway. Garden Journeys is getting a new home. Now through February, enjoy the best of Garden Journeys as we move into Time Warner's new headquarters. During this time, we'll air the shows that brought you some of the most beautiful and unique gardens here in Central New York and get tips on roses, orchids, landscapes, and more. You'll also get my answers to the peskiest of gardening questions. I'll be back live in February to bring you garden and landscape ideas and to answer all of your gardening queries. So start planning your dream garden and we'll see you in February to help make it happen. Hi, I'm Nancy Roberts. And I'm Al Faso. Over the next several weeks, we're moving to our new studio in East Syracuse. And during that move, we'll be presenting some of our best shows from this season. We won't be here live on Tuesday nights, but we can answer your PC questions via email. Our address is pc at twcny.rr.com. Join us every Tuesday at 7 p.m. for the best of point and click right here on Time Warner 13. Welcome back to the Dome and Jim Syracuse's new starter at the point doing the job on the defensive end right here. Well, Alan Griffin is an aggressive, tough kid, block shots, shoots it, and watch Brown at the other end here. Good rebound by Bill Selick, who I think you're right, is a senior. He gets to the basket there and they wave off at the hoop and they call a charge. Um, I don't know. That's a tough call right there. Tough call. Two and two for Griffin to get tonight's ball game underway. A couple of assists, a couple of boards. And I think that anybody that was worried about Jason Hart taking that whole point guard position with him and leaving Syracuse high and dry really had not watched Alan Griffin over the last few years. He's really been a, a very capable player every time he's gone in. And now that he knows it's his show, he'll do a terrific job, I think. We talked about St. Francis playing without Dominguez because of a hamstring injury. Despite his loss, Jim, what can the Terriers do here to try to keep this ball game from slipping away? Well, they're going to have to make some outside shots. Right now, they're not making anything from the outside at all. They're not, they don't look like they have a lot of strength on the inside. They're a perimeter-oriented game um, team. I mean, so I think they need to knock a few of those down, no question. Orangemen now in a 2-3 zone defense into the ball game. Queth Dwayne, number 13, and Jeremy McNeil, number 34. And they have replaced Billy Selick in the middle. And also, Damone Brown gets an early rest. Dwayne in for him. So I think you're going to see Syracuse play a lot of this all year long right here, this 2-3 zone. Against better teams and bigger teams, I really do think you're going to see them playing a lot of zone. Griffin on Howard. Three-pointer rattles out. Woo. Tip back up and in. Key bucket for St. Francis and Jason Morgan. They needed that badly, and uh, Jason just slapped at the ball and rolled off the top and in. Gets the lead down to single digits again. Shumpert for three. Dwayne had a hand on the rebound. Ripped away by St. Francis and Reyes. It's a little bit too quick, maybe, though. Circus doesn't need that. They, if they make two or three passes, they're going to get whatever they want almost this whole game. Jim Beheim has always said, if you feel like you have a good look, go ahead and take yep. the shot. But I think you're right. I think that was a little bit too quick to pull the trigger that time. That's a little too long. I mean, I know he made the last one from, from way out there, but uh, I'm not sure you want to live on that one either. But Shumpert has great confidence, and he also has great range. And, uh, you know, you can't let him make one and then miss the next one and then all of a sudden say something because he missed the next one. A career high already for Bill Selick. Five rebounds in the first 12 or eight minutes of this game. Tallest player on the court, although not at this moment. Off to a strong start here on opening night. Last foul against Deshaun Williams, by the way, his first. Three team fouls on the orange, five on St. Francis. Jeremy McNeil 
with the big time rejection inside. So I think that's a foul, not on the block shot, but on going to the basket. It looked like Deshaun Williams was holding on the way in. And there's a little bit of a body, but they're really putting an emphasis, the officials this year, on trying to clean up any rough play and physical play. And uh, that's certainly, there was some body contact there. So they're not calling him as tight this game as we've seen him so far early in the year. That was the third block for the Orange Men. McNeil's got some beef, 6'8", 248 pounds. Sophomore from San Antonio, Texas. Long rebound. Ricochets out to St. Francis. Three ball from the wing, and that was big. Jason Morgan making it tight. Well, you know they're going to take the three, Ted, and it's probably just a matter of time until they make a few of them. Now they're going to do a little bit of a press on full court here. A little 2-3. Griffin does a nice job to break it. Williams. Too long. Now that's fine if you make that three. If you make that shot, that keeps you right in it. Have to get the rebound off the miss as well. St. Francis in transition. Kind of a wild shot inside. Put up by Greg Nunn. McNeil was back there to defend. You know, there's, that's the block from the time before when Griffin blocked the shot going through that he intimidated right here. This is not a good play by Nunn. He should have just taken it strong and tried to draw the foul the normal way rather than faking on the inside. That would have been a big basket to get him within four with 9-11 to go here. Good job by Griffin to hustle back as well. Shumpert tries to put it in play. St. Francis on a 5-0 run. Well, I like the idea of St. Francis coming up and putting some more pressure on Syracuse. If they try to stand back in a half court, either man or zone, they not, there's no way they can hang with Syracuse. Dwayne looking for his first shot of the night. Griffin has logged all the minutes at the point. Shumpert throws it up and in. That's a terrific post-up move by Preston Shumpert looking for the foul as well. Shumpert and Williams with seven apiece. Syracuse lead back up to eight. Shumpert certainly has had the better of the match between he and Howard so far. He's done a great job on the defensive end as well. Ball scores free, and Syracuse will take it. Here's Dwayne. Syracuse needed a little run to uh, offset St. Francis' move, and, and they certainly did that. So the Orange men push the lead back up to double digits, taking a 24-14 advantage. And a timeout is taken by St. Francis head coach Ron Ganulin. Here's the play. Good hands by Syracuse. Nice play by Deshaun Williams. Gets it ahead to Dwayne. Very skilled, athletic player. It's going to be a very good player, I think, for the Syracuse team down the run. Williams tapping it away, and Dwayne finishing on the other end for his first two points of the season. Sophomore from Bloomington, Indiana, 6'6", 186 pounds. The Orange men have dominated inside. St. Francis has had to force up a lot of shots. They've made two three-pointers, but they've missed more than they've made. Yep, and they uh, so you're shooting the ball pretty well right now. They rebounded the ball very well against a, uh, a smaller St. Francis team. Rays being their only big player in the inside. And uh, see James Theus for the first time, the point guard out of Detroit area. Alan Griffin takes a seat on the Syracuse bench for the first time and walk on Rob McClanahan, number 24 wow. for the Orange men. That's a in. surprise. Earning some early PT in the season opener. Wow. Six points for Howard now. So McClanahan must have been doing a great job in practice. Well, he really must because he didn't play at all in the exhibition games, at least not in, uh, you know, during the uh, crunch time. So he must really have come in and done a good job. There's Rob McClanahan. Senior from Cranston, Rhode Island. 6'2", 201 pounds. He's got to be pretty fired up right now. Yeah, and he's been with the program for a while. Uh, good kid, hard worker. Maybe just Jim Baham's done one or two things, either rewarding him right now for all the efforts there, or he's playing great practice. Syracuse by eight. Still plenty of time left to go till the half in the Carrier Dome. Hey, kids, we got some great news for you. Otto is a club just for junior orange fans. And we'd like you to join in on the fun. The Got Milk Juice Kids Club is back with tons of fun for kids 12 and under. Each member gets a t-shirt, newsletter, holiday card from Otto, and a membership card with special benefits just for Got Milk Juice Kids Club members. Check out our website at suathletics.com for more information. 
Look for applications in participating Price Chopper stores and at the Carrier Dome. The Got Milk Q's Kids Club, presented by Price Chopper, 93Q, and Time Warner Cable. At Time Warner Cable, we make caring about the community one of our top priorities. That's why we encourage and support our employees who volunteer for local organizations and human service agencies. That's also why Time Warner Cable supports events like the Boy Power Dinner, assisting the Hiawatha Seaway Council in its service to 42,000 youth and adults in central and northern New York State. So, lend your time, your talents, and your resources to help make our community a better place to live. Together, we've got the power. After tonight's series opener against St. Francis of New York, it's north to Alaska for the Great Alaska Shootout for the Orange Men in the first round. The DePaul Blue Demons and in the second round, Florida State or Ohio State. Then back home to the Dome after three games in Alaska for Colgate, Akron, and the Carrier Classic Consolation or, in all likelihood, championship game. That Alaska tournament should be a great test, Jim, for this young and rebuilding Syracuse team. Yeah, it really will as we look at the stats here. Syracuse shooting well in the beginning of the game here, 50 even 50 percent. DePaul is going to be a formidable opponent early on. That'll count for Damone Brown. Six points for Brown. Balanced scoring for the Orange men so far. Shumpert and Williams, seven apiece. Brown with a half dozen. And I think you'll see those three guys really be the leaders offensively all year long, obviously. And Wood Griffin will, will be spotty, but will score certainly for this team. But DePaul going back, they'll be a very strong opener form, although they didn't play very well yesterday against uh, Lewis, only won by about eight or nine points in their opener. So everybody struggles a little bit early in the year. Reyes, call for the goal 10, dumps it out of traffic. Penetration and a reverse layup won't fall for Carl Sanders. But following up inside, Patrice Thevenot, freshman from Brooklyn, New York. St. Francis hanging tough, keeping it at single digits, down eight, seven to go before halftime. Focal point right now is going to be Damone Brown. Beautiful move on the inside. McNeil crashed the boards. Jeremy working hard. Goes up strong, draws the foul. He didn't make the basket, Jim, but he was very aggressive after collecting the rebound, and he picked up the foul. And it's funny because at the other end of the court, he, he tried to block a shot early, didn't react back to getting an offensive rebound, and they laid it in. Jim Baham is going to make a substitution with Ethan Cole coming in. And yet at the other end now, McNeil comes out and be, makes a real strong physical move on the inside. And, you know, this is a learning year for him. He's going to get thrown into the fire some. I think he's got some skills. I think he's a good shot blocker. Um, he's a little weak on the offense. I don't mean physically, but I mean experience-wise on the offensive end. Now he's going to switch around and put Cole in now for DeMole Brown. I think that saved him. That good offensive play that McNeil just had saved him from coming out of the game. I really believe that. So Damone Brown will sit. McNeil stays in the ball game for a second free throw try. And he makes them both. So beefy Ethan Cole checks in. And Jeremy McNeil goes out. And they make sure they get a shooter in there. Jim was really, I think, looking to take him out, as you can see, and talking to him right here, trying to explain to him what he wants to do. St. Francis has to make this shot. Wide open look. Jason Morgan can't get it to fall. Good defense applied by the Orange men. Hustling toward the near sideline, Howard. Syracuse ball. Duaney with a nice block on the inside on Howard. St. Francis trying to keep up the full court pressure. Syracuse going with their two point guards now. First time we've seen yep. this. Tonight. And I think you'll see that a lot during the year, too. It, it puts Griffin into that two-guard spot where he can take advantage of his quickness on the inside as well. Freshman James Theus out of Detroit. Highly regarded player from the state of Michigan. Spin move. Shot won't drop. Cole inside. Tried to follow, and the rebound comes to Reyes. That's not the shot, though, that Jim Beheim wants from your point guard. Believe me, he will not take he, He'll have Williams back in the game shortly if that's the case. Terrier's looking for a good look at the basket. Howard drives. Good pass on the baseline to the open man. Reyes scores, and he'll go to the line to try to complete a three-point play. When Howard can penetrate the way he just did, so he gets a little slow reacting on the inside. Here comes Selick in for Ethan Cole. Got a very quick, quick hook. And Williams comes in for Theus. That's a quick one as well. And, you know, you know as well as I, Ted, that Jim Beheim uses these early season games as teaching 
opportunities. And uh, he's certainly not going to let something go by that he sees as a mistake, either from Cole or Theus or Dwayne, for that matter, as well. Uh, and he's going to point it out to him. And the way he points it out is he takes him out of the game and talks to him. Shot won't fall as Reyes tried to complete the three-point play. Cole sat out last season after transferring from the University of New Hampshire. He's from Canterbury, New Hampshire. Big kid, 6'9", 244 pounds. Two seasons of eligibility here at Syracuse for him. But you know what? It is, it's a big step up in class for him as well, Ted. Um, playing in that level uh, and now coming in and playing in the Big East. This is not an easy situation. He's not obviously the focal point of any offense here at all, whereas up in New Hampshire he probably was. Here he's not going to be. He's going to be a screener and a rebounder and a defender, um, at least in the beginning. And he's only got one year left, I believe, after this year. So um, he's got a tough. He's got a tough go himself, I think, coming through here. Good trap executed by the Orange Men. Carl Sanders calls a timeout of the 30-second variety. And here's what the Terriers have coming up. Tough test at Iona, then Quinnipiac at Fairleigh Dickinson, at Pittsburgh December 9th. Another Big East Conference opponent for St. Francis, then Fairfield and St. Peter's at home. Iona lost by two, I saw Saturday, to at UMass. And they're the favorite in the MAC Conference this year. So that's certainly a difficult test. Big Jeff Rulin coaching down there and done a great job. And, uh, see Syracuse's three-point field goal percentage. If they shot 40 all year long, they'd be very, very happy. St. Francis two for eight. They've had to rely on the outside shot quite a bit here in the first half. But kind of hanging in, only down eight, and uh, certainly could be a lot worse. Howard aggressively going toward the hole as the shot blocked. Foul inside as the deflection came to Theveno. Great defense on Howard, though. I mean, Howard's looking for a foul on that. But you know what? When you make a bad, when you're out of control and you shoot the ball going away from the basket like that, most experienced officials are not going to fall for it and make that call. But St. Francis hangs in there, gets an offensive rebound, and then gets the foul that way. Second personal on Billy Selick. Five team fouls for the Orange. Seven on St. Francis. Feveno from the foul line. A little bit too strong. Skying for the rebound, Brown. Here's Griffin. Tough lead pass for Brown to handle, but he saved it to Williams. Deshaun is rejected, and St. Francis takes it. Morgan, a drive it. First layup too strong, and there's Seelick. Another rebound for Billy. Really nice two-on-one break for St. Francis that they can't convert. Those are all the things they need to do in order to stay in this game. You can't afford to give away something like that. Great hustle by Seelick to clean up the trash. Brown, his shot rattles out. Sanders with it. St. Francis hanging around, less than five minutes to go until the half. Howard baseline, awkward shot. Shumpert takes it. Here comes Griffin. St. Francis look a little tired. They're not getting back on the defensive end at all. Both Williams and Brown short arming their shots. Yep. Here comes St. Francis. Ray's doing a very good job defensively on the boards for St. Francis. Sanders nearly throws it away. Game has gotten real sloppy right now. Syracuse had 20 points in the first eight minutes of the game and have not really been able to do anything offensively in the last you know, six or seven or eight minutes. Flat-footed attempt by Sanders. Griffin might want to slow things down, yep. and he does. Good decision by the senior point guard. Both teams look a little winded right now. Griffin trying to lose his man. Looking for Shumper. Preston wasn't ready, so Allen throws it away. Syracuse a little discombobulated. Not really running their offense the way they want them to. Not getting anything off the fast break. Doing a good job in the defensive end, but not getting much on the offensive end. Official timeout. Syracuse by eight in the dome. From the moment they're born, guide dogs are prepared for a very special mission. The skills they learn bring independence to a blind person. That's why the law allows guide dogs to go everywhere that's open to the public. It's a good thing. To learn more, call the Guide Dog Foundation for the Blind at 1-800-548-4337. That's 1-800-548-4337.
There is a better way to have fun with history. Teddy, you're not even trying. Visit americaslibrary.gov. Log on, play around, learn something. As Jim mentioned before the ball game, the guy with the sideburn, senior Stephen Howard out of Watertown, off to somewhat of a sluggish start offensively. He's trying to make things happen, Jim, but having a tough time shooting so far. A lot of pressure on him, too, coming back home, and uh, I'm sure that there's a contingent from the Watertown area down here watching Stephen play and had 27 points in one of the exhibition games, but right now he's playing against bigger, stronger kids, and trumpert has been guarding him, Damone Brown's been guarding him, and those are big 6'7", six, 6'8s six, that he's not used to playing against all the time. Howard out of Jefferson County Community College. I'm a little bit surprised he isn't in the ball game right now. He stretched before the half. You know, they might have decided they wanted to give him a little break here and uh, let him take a look at the game from the bench, see what's open and what's not. Terrier's working around. McNeil battling with Reyes inside. Totally shut off on the baseline, Greg Nunn. Nunn's had a rough opener here. Uh, has shot the ball exceptionally well, and he's taken some ill-advised shots. Surprising for really one of the better guards in the Northeast Conference. Dwayne sends inside for Shumpert, and he scores off glass. Nine for Preston Shumpert, high man in the ball game. Well, you can see how small St. Francis is right now on the court. They've got Rays at 6'10", but everybody else is really small. Biggest player, Jason Morgan, at 6'4". Everybody else in the 6'1", 6'2", range. None. Wild play by Smiley inside. Syracuse has seven blocks against the smaller Terriers. St. Francis has one block shot in the game. Well, you knew that Syracuse was going to have a, an advantage on the inside, an advantage physically against St. Francis. But right now, St. Francis is kind of playing into their hands by trying to drive into the big man lane. Um, they're not shooting the ball well from the outside, so that maybe that's the way they feel as though they could draw some fouls or get involved in it. But neither team really in much of a foul problems. So he just committed five, St. Francis seven. So um, I think that the referees have pretty much let them play for the first half here. And if that happens, Syracuse is going to win this game. I mean, because they've got better players and bigger players. That's good to see. Veteran crew, Gene Manji, Steve Welmer, Keith Herring, letting them play. Mm -hmm. An outstanding crew for this series opener here in the Dome. Syracuse with eight points off turnovers, two for St. Francis. First meeting ever between the Orange Men and St. Francis of New York. And you watch it right now, if we could see the matchup here, St. Francis in the man-to-man. -man. Jamel Smiley at 5'11 is guarding Shumpert. Now I would think Syracuse is going to try and take advantage of that. Dwayne. Queth Dwayne with the bucket after the pass was tipped. Four points for Queth. Six different orange men have scored here in the first half. Syracuse leads by a dozen, under two and a half minutes to go till the break. That shot falls for Jason Morgan. Morgan has really looked good shooting the ball. He really has looked good. And uh, even though he was off balance almost on that shot, Jim Beheim getting this point across to Ref Duaney by saying, you know, you make a jump shot on one end of the court, you better guard your man on the other end because we're not going to give up three for two. That doesn't work that way. High-end end zone camera. A moment ago, you saw Stephen Howard check back into the ball game for St. Francis for the final 2-12 till the half. Six points for the senior guard out of Watertown and Jefferson County Community College. Once recruited by the Orange Men and assistant coach Bernie Fine, kind of as an insurance policy if Syracuse didn't get Deshaun Williams out of Patterson, New Jersey. But as we know, Williams did commit to the Orange Men. Brown once again at the line. He is four for four from the stripe, Jim, here in the first half. Mm -hmm. And again, looking at the size differential of t uh, on the court right now, St. Francis is really small. Howard playing that forward spot. Five for five for Damone. 6-6 six, six center. Trees 7 0 and uh, none and Smiley and I mean really tiny. I would look for Syracuse to really try to take advantage by getting the ball inside and not taking a whole lot of three point shots. Here's a good move by Jim Diane bringing James Theus back in the game for the last two minutes of the half after he kind of got on him a little bit. And now he gives him an opportunity for two minutes here to, give, to have some positive thoughts before he goes in at halftime. Brown with eight points in the first half, six for six from the line. As Jim said, 
There's a look at James Theus, freshman from Detroit, Michigan, matching up one-on-one -on -one with Greg Nunn. Senior from Inwood, New York. Howard on the baseline, too strong. Knocked out of bounds, and it'll be Syracuse ball. The Orange men have gone very aggressively to the glass. That's really good to see. Yeah, they really have. They're trying to rebound. Of course, this is a smaller team that they're rebounded against, too. And um, not to throw any, throw any uh, water on it here, but, I mean, they. this is a very, very small basketball team right now. Orange men sloppy with the ball in the backcourt, but recovering for the block, Queth Dwayne, as he stuffed Stephen Howard. Whistle, though, and it looks like it'll be a foul on Dwayne. It is. Six-team foul on the Orange men here in the first half. Second personal on Dwayne. Yeah, bad pass by Dwayne. Very weak pass on the inside that Nunn made a nice defensive play on. Then Howard took it in. But Dwayne comes back, blocks the shot, got a foul, but come back and blocked the shot there. So I think the, Jim Baham is trying to use these games as real lessons in teaching opportunities for him because he knows he's going to be in a lot of close games this year and they can't they don't have a lot of room for error and uh, they need to do all the little things right and those are one of the things right there the bad pass by Dwayne they can't have this little group of Syracuse fans under the basket their students that's good to see yep. season opening game a lot of empty seats here in the dome to get the season underway on a Sunday before the Orange men head to Alaska, and that may have distracted Howard. All that action on the other end. One of two from the line. He was a 77% free throw shooter last season. Mm -hmm. James Theus, nice play. Takes it hard to the basket. Gets in. Beats his man right down the court. That's a real good play. I think Theus is going to be a good player for Syracuse. Um, you know, certainly... He's going to get some opportunities this year as the only backup point guard, and Alan Griffin's not going to play 40 minutes a game, so certainly has some chances to show them. But I like his strength. I like his confidence. Uh, I think that he's just got to calm down, and, you know, he's a freshman, and he's going to make some freshman mistakes. He's got to be able to play through those. Uh, but I like him. I think he's going to be a good player for Jim Beheim's team. McNeil, two for three from the line here in the first half. That foul called against... James Smiley of St. Francis, his second personal. One of two for McNeil. Orange by 11. Key stretch right here for St. Francis, Jim. Yep. They want to get half. it down to single digits yeah, before I mean, halftime. Yeah, anything right, right about where they are right now would work, I think. Long three. St. Francis keeps it, though. Morgan couldn't get the shot to drop. Let's see what Howard can do. Dwayne checks him out high between the circles. Baseline around a screen. Howard's shot won't fall. Dwayne aggressively grabs the rebound, tied up inside. And that's a foul against Howard. Howard frustrated foul right there. I'm driving to the basket, didn't get anything in. He and Dwayne have been talking to each other a little bit. That's a, that, that's a funny looking shot that he has where he just kind of pushes the ball up and then Dwayne and uh, Howard go after it physical. And that's a good part of the game right there. But. Uh, Howard has really been struggling, and I think that's probably caused that foul more than anything else. Coming off the bench for the Orange men last season, Dwayne shot 77% from the line. Clock stopped, a minute 10 to go till halftime. The Orange men lead by 12 now. Dwayne has another attempt. Ron Ganulin, former assistant coach at UNLV. I interviewed Ron Ganulin for a job at St. Bonaventure about 20 years ago. Honestly, that was a one of my last years at Bonaventure, and uh, Ronnie, we had an opening in assistant. Ronnie had an interview and didn't get it, but he uh, went on to coach with Tar Tarkanian and do some great things. He's a terrific coach. He really is. Damone Brown takes it away from Jason Morgan. Preston Shumpert. And Shumpert into double digits with 11. This is just what you said, that St. Francis has to be very careful the last minute and a half, and they have not been very careful. They've had a couple turnovers, not any good looks, really, and... Uh, that's really hurt them. Now the deficit at 14 for St. Francis. Whistle inside, collecting the foul. On his way to the basket, Carl Sanders. And that'll go against Damone Brown. I think Syracuse has done an excellent job defensively, though, um, especially on Howard. Here's a guy who's the, the key offensive player, 17-18 a game, and they've really shut him down. And they've made everybody else trying to dribble through the lane and take tough shots, exactly what happened right there. So I think Jim Bayon's got to be very happy with the offensive guy. Because we watch uh, St. Francis as they take a couple free throws here, but 
They, they played their one exhibition game with 99 points against a good team with uh, Dana Dingo and Eric Harris and Kareem Reed. A lot of very good old Jerry McCall for the old pit player. Um, they beat them 99-97. So I think that this is, uh, has been a good effort defensively for Syracuse. The Orange men scoring their last bucket in transition as Preston Shumpert picked up his 10th and 11 points of the first half. It's a pretty good team, the New York Ravens. You have UMass, Absolutely. Arkansas, Pittsburgh represented. Sanders gets a point from the line. Carl, Charlton Clark is also right with UMass and uh, Tony Greer. I mean, they really have some good players there, and, and uh, St. Francis was able to beat them. So that's it. And that was without um, Dominguez as well. So. This is not a this is not a pushover team by any means. And Zurich has really done a terrific job defensively. Shot clock is off. Griffin throws it away. Bad decision by the Syracuse point guard. And Beheim really took James Theus out of the game and put Griffin in just so they could run the last second 30 30 second play. Whoa, that is a foul on Demol Williams, Deshaun Williams, I think. Physical play inside stops the clock with 10.8 seconds to go till the half. Clock was off. Shot clock was off. Less than 30 seconds to go in the half, and Griffin made a bad decision throwing that ball away. He got trapped on the side. This is a slap right there by Williams going for the ball. Certainly unintentional. But uh, on the other end here, Griffin got tripped. There got trapped in the foul and extended. Left his feet and just started throwing the ball up over the top. None will get another. Senior from Inwood, New York, has his first point. So St. Francis scoring with the clock stop. Second personal foul on Williams. Eighth team foul on the Orange men here in the first half. No Orange men in foul trouble. Concentration by none as he goes two for two. Let's see how they try to trap here in the last 10 seconds. Griffin looking to take something. Pass deflected by St. Francis. So Orange men keep it in the front court. Four seconds even to go till halftime. I like this play right here where Jim Bam really Kind of letting the players decide what they want to do. Griffin may have to throw it up from the foul line. He does. Too strong. McNeil had a hand on it. The time expires on the Orange men. And the first 20 minutes are in the books. But Syracuse has an 11-point edge at the half. Jim and really, considering it's opening night, you don't have Hart, Blackwell, and Thomas from last year. Pretty good St. Francis team. Not a bad showing for the first half of the season. No, and I think what Syracuse really is look. I've, I've been more impressed with their defense than I have with their offense because they've got an advantage on the size-wise on the St. Francis team. But I think defensively, they've taken away the major weapons of St. Francis in this first half. Orange lead at 38-27 at the break. Halftime festivities from the Carrier Dome right after this. The events are important to you. What kinds of information do you find useful? Who are the people you want to learn more about? Which issues facing our community affect you? We're finding answers to these questions every day. It's what we do. Time Warner 13, connected to the community. Mama, I played with Natalie today. You did? She looked a girl at my school. She has pretty hair and I like her long hair. Mm -hmm. We play together, we talk together, and we were eating outside and um, bugs got on it. Ooh. Nah. Ooh. They're this fly around and get on people's food. Then we killed all the bugs and then it was gone before we knowed it. Welcome back to the Carrier Dome. Halftime, the Orange Men lead St. Francis of New York by 11, 38-27 on opening nights here in the Carrier Dome along with the coach, Jim Sadlin. I'm Ted DeLuca. Jim, your thoughts on the first half? I thought Syracuse played pretty well considering its opening night, first effort of the season for the Orange Men and so many new players and new parts for Jim Beheim trying to fit in. Well, I thought that defensively they did a great job more than anything else, I think, Ted. They, uh, 
they, they didn't rebound the ball probably as well as they should have, but I really thought they did a great job stopping some people on the defensive end. They just got to be a little more patient on the offensive end, and I think they'll be fine. But, you know, they got a lot of new bodies and new faces to come in and play major roles. So once they get accustomed to that, I think they'll be fine. Let's take a look now at a handful of first-half highlights. I think that going into this season, we knew the Orange men would be able to put some points on the scoreboard. Right, and when you see the penetration by Griffin, the three-point shot by Williams, he's the one guy that can shoot it certainly as well as anybody on this team, and he is a scorer. Here's a kind of a ball tipped around three or four different times, and this is what St. Francis needs to do a lot more of, is to make the three in the second half. And uh, if they do that, they get a chance to stay in this game, but if they don't, there's no way. Here's what kind of epitomized the difference between Syracuse and St. Francis. We see Preston Shumpert cut across the middle, be guarded uh, by somebody 5'11", and you know, no challenge for him on the inside, and I think that was part of the problem for St. Francis. Shepard led all scorers in the first half with 11 points. We look at the halftime numbers now, Jim, and the Orange men doing a good job from the field and from the line as well. Yeah, really shooting the ball well, both sides. Of course, St. Francis only shooting 30% from the, field, from the field, but I give Syracuse a great deal of credit for that. Rebounding got to be a little bit discouraging for Jim Beheim, 21 to 20. They should out-rebound this team very easily. So the Orange men have an 11-point lead at the break. Next time out for the Orange men here in the Carrier Dome. After that trip to Alaska, it's the Colgate Red Raiders in town for their annual matchup with the Orange men. You will see that game here on Time Warner 13 on Wednesday, November 29th at 8 p.m. The Orange men back at home in the Dome for that one after three games in Anchorage, Alaska, coming up later on this week. Orange men lead by 11 over St. Francis at the half. We'll start the second half right after this. Welcome back under the Teflon roof of the Carrier Dome, under the big top here on the SU Hill tonight. Game one of the 2000-2001 Odyssey for the Syracuse Orange men. Opening night, 38-27 lead over St. Francis. Leading scorers at the half for St. Francis. Morgan has eight, Howard has seven. Preston Shumpert, high man for the Orange men with 11 on five of six shooting from the floor. Damone Brown, eight points. Two fouls for Damone as well in the first half. Brown, six for six from the line in the first 20 minutes of play. The, the stat that jumps out at you, though, and we've been talking about throughout the first half, is Steve Howard, 3 for 11 from the field. Uh, kid is averaging 17 points a game. He's really worked very hard to try to get seven in the first half. So give credit to Syracuse's defense for that. And uh, Syracuse's centers combined for seven points and eight rebounds. And if you multiplied that and said to Jim Beheim before Tim, hey, we're, we're going to get 15 points and 15 rebounds out of our centers this year every game, uh, he would do cartwheels right now. He'd be so happy with that one. And they also have 15 fouls to give, yep. which would help the Orange men later on this season in the physical Big East Conference. Second half about to begin here at the Carrier Dome on the campus of Syracuse University. 2000-2001 season opener for the Orange men. They lead 38-27 to at the half. A little extra time taken by St. Francis head coach Ron Ganulin talking with his troops, and here come... The Terriers out of the Northeast Conference, 18-12 and 12 last season. Four starters back from last season's club, although they don't have one of their most important players, Richie Dominguez, a senior from Columbia. He is out with a bad hamstring, and all he did last season, Jim, was average 14.5 points and seven boards a game. And in a game like this where you need a physical presence, he certainly would have been an asset, but uh, they don't have him, so they're ready to play with the guys they do have. Aggressive defense applied by the Orange men as we get the second half underway. From the baseline, wild shot thrown up by Kowalczyk. Feet inside, off the hands of Reyes. Turnover, gives the ball to Syracuse. You know, not a bad offensive set for St. Francis as Kowalczyk was able to get to the basket. Not a great shot, but he was able to get to the basket. And then Nunn was able to drive in and uh, not be able to get anything. But give Syracuse some credit again from a defensive standpoint. Tenth turnover for St. Francis. Syracuse with seven in the first half. Alan Griffin wearing number one for the Orange men this season. New starting point guard with Jason Hart onto the NBA. Selick wants the ball, and Griffin throws it away, looking for Preston Shumpert. I think Shumpert 
was surprised he got the ball. Selick was surprised he didn't. Yeah, it looked like it was a set play where they were trying to fade Shumpert off of the screen, but uh, Alan Griffin, instead of waiting to see if he was open, anticipated he was going to be open as a result of his turnover. Griffin, three assists, three turnovers on the night. A minute gone by here in the second half. Neither team has scored since halftime. This is the one place where Billy Selig is going to have some problems, is that trying to work against guys that post up strong on the inside, and, uh, you know, he's going to face against a lot of big, strong centers throughout this whole year, and that's where he's probably going to get in some foul trouble. St. Francis cuts the Syracuse lead to nine. Looks like something that Ron Daniel and talked about at the half with Reyes. We need more out of you against Billy Selig in the second half. Absolutely. That's Shumpert with 13. And there's a great play. Shumpert immediately goes to the post against Howard, 6'8 against 6'4. And it makes a difference when you get that kind of a size differential. Lead back at 11. Howard for three. Doesn't get the roll. Foul inside as Kowalczyk went up strong after collecting the rebound. I think, uh, I don't know if that was on Selick or Damone Brown. Probably should have been on Brown, but I'm not sure who got the foul. Uh, looks like Selick. That'll be the third against Billy. And that's what happens too. Billy Selick is one of those guys that he looks like he commits fouls. Or he's in a position where they're going to give him some fouls. And um, so that he's got to be very careful because he's probably going to get one of those, one or two of those every game. So he's going to have to be careful on the rest of this physical play. A little more pressure here by St. Francis to start the second half. Shumpert on the baseline scores, and he'll go to the line to try to complete a three-point play. I like that. Syracuse comes down, attacks the pressure, brings it inside. And you've got a great advantage when you get somebody that can finish it like Shepard. Watch this terrific pass, though, by Williams here. Shumper just takes it on the inside. Great body control. Drops it home. Shepard is, is such a good player, and he's improved so much when you consider where he came from in high school and in, in his freshman year here at uh, Syracuse where he was so weak physically. He's built himself up, plays with great confidence. Now we see Syracuse coming in with a full-court pressure. Shumpert now with 15 points. Syracuse up by a dozen. Griffin with the steal. Brown too strong. Foul inside. Brown over the back as Reyes grabbed the rebound. So a mistake by DeMoe. Not only to miss the shot, but he went over the back committing the foul as well. Well, St. Francis guards are so small, Nunn and Smiley, that they got trapped. Smiley got trapped real easily in the corner. They put the ball exactly where Syracuse wanted it to be. So a little foul trouble brewing for the Orange men as both Damone Brown and Billy Selick sit on the bench with three personal fouls. With two minutes and six seconds gone by in the second half, so Syracuse's bench will have to step up here with McNeil and Dwayne back in the ball game. Yep, and Jim Beheim takes Damone Brown out early, gives him a, a break here, but he got three. He can't afford to get him, let him get his fourth here. Pressure has really hurt St. Francis right now. None with it. Trapped in the corner, nearly lost the ball, but now he comes out of the pack. With Howard on the wing, he takes it himself and scores off glass. Four points for Greg Nunn. Nunn was lucky to get through the trap in the beginning and then uh, was able to complete it at the other end. Lead at 10. Pressure again offered by St. Francis. Dwayne ahead to McNeil. He drops it off for point guard Alan Griffin. Smiley checking him. Here again is Shumpert posting up down low, Nunn guarding him on the inside. An unbelievable mismatch, and I think Shumpert sees that. We'll try to get on the inside. Shumpert's got to move without the ball. Griffin spins, and he lost it. Shot clock down to single digits, and a turnover gives the ball to St. Francis. Not a good move by Alan Griffin as he tries to do some one-on-one -on -one play, and he gets... Uh, taken out immediately. Damone Brown back in for Queth Dwayne. James Theus checks in for the Orange Men, replacing Alan Griffin. 
Shot too strong. Howard's had a tough night here in the dome. Yeah, he really is. He's getting it. That's a nice play by him to get free and get an open shot, but he just can't put anything down. Shumpert pulls up, and he will that shot in. 17 for Preston. Shumpert got fouled on the play as well and didn't get the call. 11 in the first half, 6 since halftime for Shumpert. Shumpert hits the deck, no call. Smiley wants to slow it down. Williams meets him out high. Howard's tough offensive night continues. Long three, short. Williams the board. If I'm Rays, I'm upset right now. He's put working hard to try to post up inside, and Howard just takes about a 28-foot jump shot to try to get himself going. Not a good play. Brown's hook shot is short. Ball trickles out of bounds. Last touched by the Orange and Jeremy McNeil. So St. Francis and Reyes will put it in play on the baseline. Syracuse lead at 12. Good play by James Theus with a tip from behind. Syracuse really doesn't have numbers, but Brown says, I think I'll take it anyways. Through the layup. Makes a good one. He's got to hit that shot, especially when the games get tougher later this season. Howard might be forcing it. Here's another three. He misses again. Uh, Whistle inside. Very G physical play. Jeremy McNeil really is the legitimate shot blocker. I mean, of the three play the three headed center that Syracuse has, he is the legitimate shot blocker, as we can see. Um, gets a foul on the second part of that, but watch the first play. Great block right there. Give Kowalczyk some credit for taking the ball back up and getting fouled on the second way through. But Howard is just struggling through a, a tough night. And you know when you come back home a lot of times, serious pressure on you. And, uh, and he has not been able to, to come through making a couple. He's got some good looks, but he just hasn't knocked anything down. Mass substitutions for Jim Beheim. Alan Griffin, Billy Selick, Queth Dwayne in, Deshaun Williams, Jeremy McNeil, Damone Brown out. Jim, to your point, Howard, 3 for 15 from the field, 0 of 6 from three-point range. Yep. I think if I was St. Francis right now, they're kind of hanging in down 12, 11, but I think right now at this point I'd really look to get the ball inside and see if Syracuse can guard my big people. Rays is not a great offensive player, but he's 6'11 and strong, so I think I'd look to see if we could make some moves on the inside with him. Syracuse has an 11-point lead, plenty of time left to go in the second half. What's life like for our Central New York families in the 90s? And where can we find help for the problems we face? I'm Linda Cohen, host of Families in Focus. Join me and my guests, chosen from among our best local experts, as we explore everything from the importance of children's friendships to how to use discipline most effectively. That's on Families.